Hi guys, this is Ashley back with another podcast episode. So I'm seeing a lot of discussion as to um, Ice Spice and JT um, fighting over who is the princess of rap. Okay, some people are even saying that Sexy Red is the princess right now. And then I hear people saying that, you know, Megan the Stallion had the potential to be the princess of rap. And then some people are saying that the title still belongs to Doja Cat. Okay, even though Nikki never gave Doja Cat that title. She only gave that title to JT and to Ice Spice. Now, as for JT and Ice Spice, I don't believe that JT and Ice Spice are fighting for the title of the Princess of Rap. I believe that they both are calling themselves the Princess of Rap because Nikki gave them that title. Now, JT, in my opinion, is not the princess, only got one song, and that one song may not even chart, okay? So one of the qualifications, in my opinion, to be the Princess of Rap is that you have to chart. You have to have the numbers, okay? Um, if you're going to be the princess, you got to put up the stats because the queen puts up the stats. So it's only fair and right if you put up the stats. Um, and JT has the talent, but she don't have the numbers and she didn't have the numbers with the city girls either. So to me, um, she can't be the princess of rap right now. She can call herself the princess all she want. You know, she can speak it into, you know, fruition. But right now, she is the princess of Little Uzi, okay? Little Uzi and her can battle it out um, and wear each other's dresses and clothes. And she can lick on his piercings. And they can battle out who is the princess. Because I believe that Little Uzi believes that he is the princess of rap too, okay? Um, as for Ice Spice, she has the stats. But... The music to me is a little bit one dimensional to be the princess. You know, it's a little bit one dimensional. I haven't been wowed by Ice Spice uh, when it comes to bars. Well, actually, that's not true. The Barbie World bars, you know, Barbie World, you know, I was very impressed. I'm not going to hold you. And the fans on social media were saying that Ice Spice ate, you know, Nikki up on Barbie World and how her verse was better. That's what they were saying on social media. Okay, so I have to give credit for the Barbie World, um, you know, song. But other than that, I haven't really been impressed by Ice Spice musically. But she carries herself like a princess. Um, and she also has the stats as of right now. Mostly collaborations, but she still got the stats. Another thing with Ice Spice, though, is that she needs a stylist. Um, I think that we got to move out of, you know, the poom poom shorts and the poom poom skirts, you know, is giving Megan a stallion. Um, I think that she got to elevate and dress like a princess. And I know she's a new artist. I understand. But if you can buy a big old chain, she just bought a chain that probably costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. OK, she just signed a record label contract with Capital and 10K Records. They gave her 2 to $3 million. She can afford to get a stylist. I think she'd be styling herself and it shows. I think she needs a new stylist. There's no shade. Now, Dolce Cat. Dolce Cat has the music, the catalog, to be the princess of rap. But to me, Dolce Cat has been, you know, too demonic in the last year and a half. No shade. Um, I don't feel like the princess of rap should be too demonic. I understand that you got to do your symbolisms and everything for the industry. But um, I think she's taking it too far with the bloody nose and, you know, dressing up as the devil and talking about, oh, I'm a rebel. I'm a devil in um, her music. It's just too much of the demonic stuff. So unfortunately, I no longer believe that Doja is the princess, in my opinion. I feel like she's taking it too far. You know, she need to turn it down a notch. And then on top of that, I don't feel like her recent music is giving princes of rap. Okay. Um, I understand that she wants to go back to the old Dolja Cat or whatever, but eh, I'm not impressed. 
So unfortunately, I don't believe that she is the princess anymore. Um, you know, maybe when the album comes out, my opinion will change. But as of right now, you know, Dolja is the demon, not the princess of rap. No shade. Um, and then as for Megan Thee Stallion, um, Megan had potential to be the princess of rap. But Megan's a little bit one dimensional, in my opinion. Um, you know, she's just a little bit one dimensional. Sex, sex, sex. That's all she talked about. And then, you know, again, the Poom Poom shorts. Um, I think she does need a stylist. And Megan been in the game for a while. So I think she needs to elevate her fashion. It's gotten better over the course of the years, but it's still not that great. You know, but it's gotten better. And then as for Sexy Red, absolutely not. Sexy Red um, can't even qualify to be the princess of rap. You know, the people that are saying that, they're very delusional. Um, but she cannot qualify to be the princess of rap because at the end of the day, uh, Sexy Red to me is not that talented. Okay. She don't even stay on beat. She like offbeat Carisha. Very, you know, just talking about sex and ski, whatever. I don't really think that she has the talent to be the princess of rap. Um, and she definitely don't have the luck. No shade. Okay. She talked about, you know, how she went to the high school and you know, is paying for people's haircuts and wigs for prom. Like, girl, you need a new wig. That red wig got to go, okay? It's ran through, okay? You got to switch up the hair. So, unfortunately, she's disqualified. Uh, right now, for me, there is no princess of rap. The spot is open. You know, things can change. But I don't see any one of these girls as the princess of rap. Now, another thing we got to discuss is Champagne Thickums a groupie. Um, a lot of fans are calling him a groupie because, you know, he was picture holding Sexy Red, um, at, you know, one of his concerts, you know, he brought her out. Um, he actually did the same thing with Glow Stick. You know, he got close to Glow Stick earlier this year. He did the same thing with Bia. He was flirting with Bia when Nikki had did the whole lot of money collaboration, um, he also did the same thing with Cardi B. He brought Cardi B out during the Nicki Minaj hate train. Fans are calling Champagne Thickums a groupie because every time a new hot artist come out, he has to get close to them. Okay. And he does it with the R&B girls too. I remember he DM Summer Walker um, when she got, you know, a buzz. That's why him and London on the track don't mess with each other because he was DMing Summer Walker. He did the same thing with Tanaje. Okay, when Tanaje was popping, he brought her out trying to get close to her. Um, and I understand both sides. I feel like he's showing love to the newer artists as he should. Um, but I also feel like Champagne Thickums is a known wave rider. He rides other people's waves. Okay, and I think people are just realizing it because Champagne Thickums musically has declined. So people are noticing that he rides people's waves a lot more because musically, um, he has to climb. It's not Scorpion, God's Plan, Champagne Thickums anymore. Okay, like to me, Champagne Thickums hasn't had a solid, good hit um, since God's Plan, in my opinion. Rich Flex was okay. I wasn't really impressed. Um, Wait For You, not his song. That was Features. And Thames was the sample. So to me, I get both sides. I do feel like he is kind of a groupie, but he's also, you know, showing love. And I think that's why a lot of the younger artists like Champagne Thickums because he's not scared to show love. And um, just how like Charlemagne the puppet was praising him for, you know, extending the olive branch to the younger generation. I think he feels like he has to do it because. That's what he's supposed to do as an OG. So I get both sides, but he is a wave rider, okay? Um, Because if that was Sexy Red from, you know, State Farm, he probably wouldn't even be paying her any mind, okay? But because she got a buzz single and, you know, she got that Nikki Cole sign, of course he gonna, you know, wrap his arm around her. And I also think he would sleep with Sexy Red. I think that's the main reason why um, he did all of that, saying that, you know, she was his wife, because he want to try it out. You know, Champagne Thickums is a thought, okay? He's a thought with a lipo um, and a BBL, and he's always going to be that. So I'm not really shocked. Now, unfortunately, I got to talk about this Carly Russell situation. 
So this young lady um, faked her abduction, okay, um, allegedly. Um, she was in nursing school and then allegedly she failed out of nursing school and I guess she had planned her abduction. She said that, you know, she saw a child walking. I believe it was on the highway or whatnot. Allegedly, that was not true when they show the evidence. She was Googling if you got to pay for an Amber Alert. Now, people are calling her Carly Smollett, Carly the Stallion. And here's my thing. Um, I feel like black women should not be blamed for this person um, lying about an abduction. Um, two, um, I don't understand why she did it because, okay, you flopped out of um, nursing school, okay? I mean, is it the end of the world? No. Now, this will forever haunt her because when she tries to get a job, I don't know if she has a job now, but if she tries to get a job, she will be forever known as the person that faked her abduction. You know, this is not a good look for the black community, but also for the future of her career. Because, you know, when she tries to get a job and they're going to be like, isn't this the girl that faked her abduction? You know, she's always going to be known as a liar. Now, here's the thing, though. People are saying, well, you know, you can't really compare it to Megan Thee Stallion because Megan was proven right. But how was Megan proven right? Because I didn't really see a lot of evidence. It was more of he said, she said. It was more of them taking whatever the witnesses said, even though two of the witnesses, um, you know, changed their story last minute. Um, you know, that's basically what they took the evidence on because I didn't see any hardcore evidence during this Tory Lane trial. None. Okay. You know, people are saying, oh, there's a recording, there's a camera and there's video evidence. Where's the video evidence? That's never going to come out. So to me, I mean, I really didn't see a lot of evidence proven that Tory was guilty, but unfortunately, you know, he didn't testify. Okay, you're the man in this situation. If it was your gun, you're responsible. So he got to take this out. And that's just what it is for Tori. But, um, you know, I don't feel like it's right to call her Carly the Stallion either. Um, or Carly Smollett. Okay, um, Carly Russell. Okay, there could be more than one liar in the world. I just feel like this is going to ruin the future of this girl's career. You're always going to be known as a liar and a psychopath because who would fake their abduction? That's kind of weird. Now, another topic I want to discuss is the writer strike that is currently going on. Um, and um, musicians feel like they should join the strike when it comes to streaming because streaming payouts don't really pay a lot. Okay. Now, here is the streaming payouts. For most streaming platforms in regards to music, and fans were talking about how the chart obsessed racist Taylor um, allegedly she had tried um, to boycott and she had removed her entire catalog from streaming platforms, um, but not a single big artist joined her. Okay, um, I don't remember the chart obsessed racist doing that. I think that the Chart Obsessed Racist music was always on streaming platforms. It wasn't on Spotify now. It was Queen B, um, Adele, and the Chart Obsessed Racist. They didn't put their music on Spotify right away because Spotify pays the least. This is the most popular, but Spotify pays artists the least when it comes to um you know, their music and streams. So with that being said, of course, artists are not going to boycott the streaming services or go independent. They would get um, blacklisted. That's how a lot of artists make their money. A lot of fans now are not really buying music, okay? Like the Chart Obsessed Races, they buy her albums and stuff like that. But if you look on Payola Board, you know, the chart obsessed races, she get a lot of radio play 
and a lot of streams. Okay, the sales might be 3000 for that week, but it's mostly radio play and streams that help an artist stay on the charts. So, of course, they're not going to boycott because they will lose money in the end. Now, maybe not a lot of money because they don't really pay much when it comes to streaming, but you'll still lose some money. And then on top of that, you're going to piss off the execs. So that's probably why nobody joined her. Okay. And it didn't last long because um, the chart of such races got her music on all the streaming platforms. And I believe it was Spotify that Adele, Queen B, and the chart of such races didn't put their music on because, um, you know, Spotify don't pay as much um, as the other platforms. But with that being said, I don't think it would be a good idea to boycott because at the end of the day, um, you know, the music industry is going to lose a lot of money. You're going to piss off a lot of people. But I do believe that bigger artists like the Chart Obsessed Racist, the Nikki's, the Champagne Thickums, and the Queen Bee, they have the power to go strictly independent, okay? Um, and not be under a big record label, okay? I think that Nikki should go strictly independent. Uh, Republic Records barely does anything for her, okay? She doesn't really need them. But, well, she do. She needs them when it comes to radio play because radio counts towards the charts. So that she needs them for. But other than that, not really for anything else, okay? Because they don't really give her a push. But unless she want to pay for radio out of pocket, which is going to be kind of hard, um, you know, she would need them for that. But besides that, I don't think a lot of these big artists need, um, you know, the record labels and stuff like that. But it's the same thing for the scammies. All these big artists should have been boycotted the scammies, but only a few do. Like Champagne Thickums in the weekend. Everybody else still handing their music and then they complain when the scammies get it wrong. So it goes for everything. But let me know how you guys feel about that. I just thought that was kind of interesting. Now, I just want to discuss Tanaje really quickly because I see that she is releasing music. Her last album was completely fire. Um, she is currently independent, so she's not really getting a push. And it's just so sad how the industry dropped the ball on Tanaje because, you know, she didn't want to get ran through um, by industry execs. They just dropped the ball. She has a lot of talent, okay? Um, In my opinion, Tanaje is more talented than Rihanna and a lot of these other pop stars, okay? Um, She has the look. She has the voice. Um, you know, if she had gotten a push, she would have had the hits. Okay. Cause now we don't really have hits in today's time it is more so who has more radio play. Okay. That's what the charts is based on streaming radio play and playlisting. It's not even about the sales. So I feel like if she had radio play, she could have had, you know, the hits. Okay. Um, and I think that it's sad that You know, Tanaje, who is so talented, um, will never reach her full stardom because of industry politics. There's a lot of people that could have been bigger if they had gotten more of a push. And I low-key wish, you know, Queen B um, would have signed Tanaje, okay? Because um, even though she's holding Chloe back, the reason why she's holding Chloe back is because Chloe tries to, you know, sound like her. Tanaje don't sound like Queen B and she don't attempt to sound like Queen B. Tanaje was always compared to Rihanna. She was always compared to Rihanna. That was her downfall though. Getting compared to Rihanna, same thing with Rita Ora. So, with that being said, I felt like it would have been a good look. She's already under Rock Nation and Camel Face ain't doing nothing for her. So, with that being said, I do feel like if she had been under Parkwood Entertainment uh, with Queen Bee's guidance. It would have been better because she don't try to sound like Queen Bee, okay? Her music is more pop, um, pop dance, less soulful. And, you know, she doesn't try to dress or look or act like Queen Bee like Chloe does. No shade of Chloe, but she do. And so she was always compared to 
um, Rihanna. And with that being said, I think that it would have been a good look versus, you know, Devil Nation, who's not really giving her a help. But let me know how you guys feel about it. I'm going to end it here. Thank you guys for all the support. I will see you guys in the next podcast episode and have a great day.